I want to thank the Virginia Bells and the Virginia Gentlemen for their performance. In describing our plans for this day of dialogue, we've said that we want to continue conversations that began in the aftermath of Yardley Love's death last spring. In that spirit of continuity, it's worth noting that both the Virginia Bells and Virginia Gentlemen also performed at the vigil for Yardley Love last spring. In fact, the songs they performed this morning, they also performed at the vigil. In a very real sense, we are picking up from where we left off last May. We know that our university community today is different from the community that existed last May. Last year's fourth year class has taken their degrees. About 25% of today's student body, our first year class, wasn't here last spring. Some of our current faculty and staff members were not here last spring either. I was not here last spring. Those of us who weren't in Charlottesville last May experienced Yardley's death from a distance. Even from a distance, though, it was heartbreaking. Although we may think of Yardley's death as the inspiration for this day of dialogue, this day is about much more. Last year was an unusually difficult year for this community. Seven university students died during the year, and Virginia Tech student Morgan Harrington also died here. Some of these deaths happened away from grounds. Some seemed unforeseeable and perhaps unpreventable. One student died in an earthquake in Haiti. Another died in a caving accident in Utah. For some of these deaths, though, we are left to wonder whether we might have done something differently to change what happened. Particularly in situations in which students were victims of violence, we wonder if we might have done something, or said something, or somehow intervened to alter the circumstances and prevent the terrible outcomes. The inspiration for this day came from student leaders, students who were advocates for exploring the linked issues of responsibility and community. Not surprisingly, many people, including parents, have been in touch with me about this day. Some have expressed the opinion that we should not talk about such issues, that these issues are depressing or upsetting, and young people should not have to consider things that are depressing or upsetting. These are difficult matters to ponder and difficult topics to discuss. It may be uncomfortable for you to talk about. In fact, it would be easier for us to ignore these subjects altogether. Denial is a very human characteristic. The Victorians, it is said, talked constantly about death, but wouldn't dare talk about sex. In our society, we talk constantly about sex, <laughs> but don't dare talk about death. There are also many social cues that discourage us from bringing personal distressing matters into the workplace or into the classroom. As we begin this day of dialogue, we should acknowledge several things. We should acknowledge that within this large group of people, we have many different perspectives on violence, abuse, and death. Some of us have experienced these things only from a distance. Some of us have witnessed them firsthand. Some in this room have been victims of violence or abuse themselves. We need to understand and respect the reality that these are intensely personal matters for some of us. 
we also acknowledge that most victims of hate and violence are not well known. Many victims suffer in silence and anonymity. Yardley Love's death was national news. But for many others, their abuse, even their deaths, receive little attention. We gather today for those people, too. Although we have seen horrible events right here in Charlottesville, we acknowledge that violence, bias, and abuse are national and global problems. All over the world, victims of hate and abuse are suffering, many of them with no recourse for help or even for making their suffering known. We gather today for those people, too.